everybody look at this you can see a swirling system making its way through portions of canada and as that lingers through mid-month we'll see on and off cold fronts making their way across the country and those could produce some severe weather but also bring in some heat relief in the form of some very cool air at least for summer standards so thank you so much for joining me here at one nation weather let's go ahead and talk about that big blast it's july 7th 2023 in the afternoon and i'm talking about the short range and the long-term forecast but let's start with your saturday severe weather outlook as we're gonna have that surge of cool air really eliminating thunderstorms from the from the outlook really for us here as we go into portions of the north central tier the high plains but really here coming out of the front range and then making its way into the southern central region for us here that's where we've got the level two severe weather threat with that black area being where we're going to have that hatched area for two to three inch hail being possible so that does include that tennis ball that baseball sized hail getting going into portions of southeast colorado and then some of those could also enter the panhandle of oklahoma and northeast new mexico this whole zone with that cool air making its way in aloft that could definitely support some one to two inch hail across the zone along with those gusty winds one or two tornadoes also not being able to be ruled out also some risks at least a level one chance into portions of illinois and indiana so here's that cool air blast as we go into your saturday afternoon notice we have some warmer or at least about five degrees above average ahead of this but in general the main color that you're drawn to on the screen is that pinkish purple color as we're going to see these 10 to 20 degree temperature departures surging southward into the central plains for your saturday afternoon so so here we go. Again, there's that severe weather risk really overlapping with a flood risk that's also going to push on off towards the east. A good bit of rainfall into portions of the east and, and central part of the country for us. Notice how we have another cold front swinging on down behind that, really initiating, helping to initiate those storms out in front as well. As we have these 80s and 90s in the southern tier, we do have some 100 degree readings getting going into portions of New Mexico and Texas with some warm readings as well back into the Pacific Northwest. Now your Saturday storm energy Again, it's not going to be very high, but we're definitely going to have at least low to moderate levels of that in the south central tier, which is why that's where the storms are anticipated to develop. So here we go, 1 p.m. central time. Not too much going on on your Saturday, as we expect, but we could see some early development in portions of southeast Wyoming, Nebraska, as well as into Colorado and Kansas, as these storms really kind of form after some older ones from tonight get down further off towards the southeast notice how we could see some of these pink spots those bigger hailstones getting going in these storms as they push on off towards the south and east continuing to around 9 p.m central time on the h triple r model western kansas getting in on the main complex that's going to be part of the night with some hailstones getting going on the front end of that gusty winds as well notice how this forms into more of that damaging wind kind of threat as we go into the overnight hours as this pushes down towards oklahoma city towards around 3 a.m really the entire northern part of oklahoma getting covered by this and parts of texas will also be impacted i think which is what that model does not certainly show on this screen but as you can see saturday through sunday for us here this is just 24 hour rainfall we could see some of these red areas pick up about two to three inches of rain and those quick totals could definitely result in some flooding so we'll definitely be watching that closely for us here as more heavy showers also continue into portions of the east that could trigger some isolated flooding there now as we go into your sunday cooler is spilling into the great lakes region as well as the midwest strong winds and hail being the main threats with the severe weather risk that will include portions of the Atlantic all the way down the east coast into the southeastern zone that will include the lower Mississippi River Valley force as well but also notice some cool some cool storms firing back up literally they might look pretty nice and they will unfortunately not be great if you're under them but they're also being triggered by the cool air force here really resulting in some hailstones again in that area I think as temperatures are well below average in that area notice how some cooler than average temperatures try to make their way into the northeast and onto the east coast as we went to Sunday afternoon as well again there's that cold front more cold Cold front swinging on down behind it triggering those afternoon showers and storms in the plains but it's really going to be these ones in the east that we're watching for flooding and severe weather on your sunday now your sunday forecast high temperatures in the 80s and 90s in the immediate southeast notice we do have some warmer air briefly moving on ahead of that next cold front but temperatures in the central part of the country really staying below average with 70s and 80s there very warm in the west in general so here's the model for your sunday afternoon storms again flooding very heavy rainfall the lightning and then again some isolated damaging wind gusts possible out of these storms as they push off the east coast so here's your monday setup scattered afternoon showers and storms in the northern plains and the upper midwest force here but also notice how we have that lingering cold front spinning off that low pressure system in canada continuing on the east coast so area one of that cooler air really degrading with some five to ten degree below average readings in the southeast the second one starting to push into the dakotas and minnesota as we go into your monday afternoon so monday with that system diving on down into the plains i do anticipate a level two severe certainty from me 
as we go to South Dakota on down to Kansas. That's two out of four, by the way. The rainfall from Friday night through my Monday night is quite impressive. We could see some two to four inch totals in the northeast triggering some flooding. Many spots seeing at least an inch if you're from the center, the eastern half of the country for us here. Now, as we go into our Tuesday, that next cold front will, yes, more of these cold fronts pushing on through. That next one will be moving from northwest to southeast. Here we go. Severe weather possible from eastern Montana and into the Dakotas as I see it right now. And then you can see exactly how this looks for us here. There's the cold front pushing off the shore. Here's the next one swirling on down into the northern tier of the country with dry air and cooler air surrounding kind of in the middle wedge between those. Here we go into our Wednesday with the severe weather potential making its way into the Midwest as well as portions of Missouri and back towards Kansas. And then Thursday, I think that threat shifts eastward a little bit with another threat beginning to develop back into the Dakotas. And that system is something to watch late next week as the models are keeping a very close eye on that. So let's play this out for you here. Here you go. Here's that drier cold front number one pushing off the East Coast Monday. Here's number two as we go Tuesday into Wednesday pushing into the central and eastern part of the tier as we go Thursday, Friday. And there's the third one as we go towards late next week making its way up the east coast and the models do tend to overdo things before they happen but nonetheless it is a good idea to be watching out for the next seven to ten days for some of these cold fronts that will be slipping in between these pockets of cool and dry air producing more storms and briefly flashing some heat out ahead of them so here's that first blast of cold air falling apart in the south and east here's the second one making its way on down towards midweek as you can see mainly entering the central and northern plains with heat developing out ahead of it and then again that will help fuel storms with each cold front but in general cool air is going to be the, the topic that's going to be winning out for us here Cold front number one will bring near-term severe. Saturday's threat will include wind, hail, and a couple tornadoes for the south-central region with a risk zone in the southeast Sunday. Cold air will be a big influence as a strong disturbance in Canada will spout off those cold fronts every couple days through July 20th, causing storms out ahead of each one. Temperature departures coming for millions as 10 to 20 degree below average readings will surge into the northern plains with areas east seeing occasional slight departures but also some warm-ups. The pattern will gradually degrade with models hinting at more long term summer like weather trying to return as we go towards later in the month meaning that while we will have some of these warm-ups going on during the cold snap it's in general looking like the cool air will win warmer air will win as we go towards later july so enjoy the cool temps when it isn't storming so go ahead and subscribe hit the like button for more updates like this and here are the credits